Do you know what? Uh, Blu-ray and HD DVD may very well have been the last format war of all time. That's kind of weird. Format wars, if you don't already know, are when two or more competing technologies try to win the hearts and, of course, the wallets of consumers to become the standardized technology during a certain time period. Now, format wars have happened tons of times in the past. We have the most recent one, which pretty much all of us should remember, HD DVD versus Blu-ray. But of course, there have been other wars like cassette versus 8-track, DVD versus DivX. One of the most historic ones is VHS uh, versus Betamax. Now, the list goes on, but in the late 1970s, a format came along and was the awkward third wheel in the Betamax versus VHS format war. This medium was weird. It wasn't practical enough to compete against VHS, but it was so unique and so good that it couldn't be ignored either. And this little medium gained a small but proud cult following for more than 20 years. Say hello to Laserdisc. Laserdisc has an absolutely fascinating history, but the main technology was inspired by a certain Dr. David Paul Gregg, who doesn't really ever get the attention or the credit that he deserves, but Dr. Gregg was the inventor of the original optical disc, which didn't just help invent Laserdisc, but all subsequent uh, technologies that were based around the same idea, such as CDs and DVDs. Now, Greg was inspired as early as 1958 by the idea that video could actually be reproduced through electron beam optical technology. Now obviously Laserdisc and subsequent uh, technologies went with lasers instead of electron beams, but the idea and the principle is very similar. Uh, Dr. Greg has a patent for a certain video disc as early as 1962. Uh, this did not come out till 1978 and CDs did not come out until four years after that, with DVDs obviously not coming out until the, the 90s. So this dude was pretty ahead of his time. After shuffling through many different companies, he ended up founding his own company, Gauss Electrophysics. Now in 1968, MCA, who if you don't know, was the equivalent to Sony BMG and Universal Media Group. It was just this massive music conglomerate that owned like everything. It had tons of rights to music and movies and everything of the like. Now, they purchased the Gauss patents from Dr. Uh, David Paul Gregg, and his designs and his patents paved the way for Laserdisc, which was demoed to the public four years later in 1972 with the name DiscoVision. Yeah, it was called MCA DiscoVision. It was the 70s. They really quickly realized that that was a terrible name and switched to Laserdisc, but originally this was called MCA DiscoVision, released in 1978. So MCA had the technology pretty much narrowed down, but they didn't have the resources nor the experience to build the actual players, the hardware. Now Philips, who funny enough, Dr. David Paul Gregg had already talked to years prior, was trying to make their own video disc after telling Dr. Gregg that his idea was stupid. Now Philips had good hardware, but they were really struggling to create the discs because Dr. David Paul Gregg's designs originally called for a uh, malleable disc rather than a rigid disc like Laserdisc eventually had. So logically MCA and Philips teamed up, but it didn't really work out for a variety of uh, technical reasons and manufacturing issues. Now, we get to this player, my player. This is an industrial player developed by Pioneer in the 80s, designed for the education markets. Uh, it was designed for education, workplaces, etc. Now, Pioneer at this time was a very small Japanese company. They didn't do a lot of business outside of Japan, but they had the expertise and the experience to really help get Laserdisc off the ground because not only did they manufacture the players and the hardware in Japan, which were way superior to anything that Philips had tried, but they actually manufactured the physical discs as well, which again were much higher quality than anything that MCA was able to pump out. So, MCA and Philips uh, kind of had the original idea, but Pioneer was really the company that improved on many of Greg's original designs, which were rather imperfect, and became the true engineers and minds behind Laserdisc. So if you want to credit anyone other than maybe Dr. David Paul Gregg for the idea, it was Pioneer that made everything happen. Now, Laserdisc technology is really pretty simple. The discs are 12 inches in diameter. They're the same size as a record and they're also double-sided. Now they work very similarly to a CD and CDs work really quite simply. There is a very thin layer of metal and what happens is that the metal has bumps, which are known as pits and falls on a microscopic level that a laser is able to read. Now the difference between Laserdisc versus newer technologies like CD and DVD is that Laserdisc was completely analog. 
So this means that rather than the pits and falls reading ones and zeros, which though a massive oversimplification is like a CD and DVD, Laserdisc uses FM modulation instead, which means that the pits and lance, or the bumps on the surface of the aluminum, are dynamic. They vary in size and spacing, as opposed to a CD which are all the same size, either up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Whereas a Laserdisc was up, down, this way, this direction, slightly larger, a little fatter, a little shorter, a little more shallow. Pretty impressive stuff. Now, the question is, why was Laserdisc any better than VHS or Betamax? It's pretty simple, really. Video and audio quality. The video was remarkably better than VHS or Betamax, and Laserdiscs were even made into the early 2000s because many thought that they were even better than the early DVD releases. So during the 90s, Pioneer made a hybrid Laserdisc that carried analog video, but they also had digital encoding, which meant that digital audio could be carried on the disc itself. I have a disc here that has 5.1 digital surround sound, which had not existed on the VHS, and it was not even existing in the early days of the DVD. So 1995, this movie came out with surround sound. That had never happened before, and there were a couple titles like it before that. But not only were they able to carry multiple channel sound, uh, but they were actually had really, really high bit rates. So audiophiles used Laserdisc for music listening. A lot of albums were released on Laserdisc. And until the invention of the Super Audio CD in the mid-2000s, uh, Laserdisc was kind of wanted by many because Laserdisc outdid the pressing quality of CDs and DVD audio. Now, Laserdisc also have a much longer lifespan because they aren't optical, they're not magnetic, and they degrade at a much lower rate than VHS uh, magnetic tapes. So as if that wasn't enough to convince you that Laserdisc was a superior format, you did not have to rewind the dang things like you did a, v a VHS. You didn't have to take it back to Blockbuster and get fined for, not <laughs> for, for getting to rewind. So, and it's not just that, but there were chapter markers just like DVDs as early as the late 80s, making scene selection way better. So if this format was so dang cool, why did it fail? Well, it failed because of cheap Americans. I'm kidding, but not really. Laserdisc was insanely popular in Japan because Pioneer had subsidized the price of Laserdisc to be about the same as VHS. So when you compare the cost uh, side by side, when it's similar, and you look at the features of both, Laserdisc is the obvious choice. It was easy to choose because it's better in virtually every way. More durable, lasted longer, higher quality, you didn't have to rewind it, just so many advantages. But in the States, that wasn't the case because it wasn't cheap. By the early 1990s, when Laserdisc prices had been the cheapest they'd ever been, VHS only cost $1 to manufacture and they sold anywhere from 10 to 15 bucks for a movie. Laserdisc still costed over $5 a pop to make, and oftentimes they sold for in excess of $30 a movie. That's a lot to pay. And if that wasn't the only problem, they were big and bulky much less robust than a VHS tape that you could just drop off in the blockbuster bin down your street, subject to high temperatures and careless handling without any damage, whereas these, like a CD and DVD, unless you hold them and you care for them rather carefully, they damage pretty quickly. So convenience was also a major issue. Laserdiscs could only hold up to about 60 minutes of video on each side. So yes, you'd have to stand up halfway through the movie and flip the disc around. What's more is that what happens if your video is over two hours long, your movie's two and a half hours? Well, that means two discs. So it wasn't convenient at all. In the late 80s and the early 90s, Laserdisc players had the laser head on a track so that while there was still a 30 second pause halfway through the movie, the laser head would actually move automatically to the other side of the disc without you having to eject and flip it, which was nice, but it came at a time that was far too late. That wasn't enough to save Laserdisc. The price is what killed it, and VHS was already the standard by the early 80s. It's really a shame, because it was a remarkable technology that was just too far ahead of its time. That said, thanks to Laserdisc, the CD was invented just four years later, which obviously was a revolution, and DVDs and Blu-ray, which share very similar technologies, came as a result. So next time you're watching a video on Netflix and it pauses to buffer, just be glad you don't have to get up off the couch to flip the disc. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, stay snazzy. Keep in mind, just did not help invent the laser disc, but it helped all... <laughs>